So in Philemon uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, as where I'll begin reading this morning, it says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual in the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. And what I want to preach to you about this morning is having an effectual faith, an effectual faith. That's Paul's prayer here to Philemon when he wrote him. He said that he prayed that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing. That was Paul's desire for Philemon. I believe that's Paul's desire for all the Christians that he spoke to, everybody that he knew. And that is uh, the desire that we should all have for one another. That's the desire that we should have for ourselves, that we would not only have a faith that has saved us, but that we would actually have a faith that is effectual, a faith that has an effect. That's what effectual means. It means successful in producing a desired or intended result, meaning effective. So effectual is really just our modern day word, effective. <clears throat> so an effectual faith, the faith that Paul is praying here for Philemon, is an effective faith. We see that effectual is something that is associated with action. It's not an idle faith. It's not a dead faith, but it's a faith that actually gets something done. <clears throat> we see that throughout the scripture. That word effectual is used in that manner. If you would, go over to Ephesians chapter 3. Keep something in Philemon, but go to Ephesians chapter 3. To have an effectual faith is to have a faith that works. To have a faith that reaches beyond just uh, within ourselves, beyond just our own personal salvation, but actually works in our lives. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. So Paul there, of course, is talking about the fact that there was a door open to him. There was an opportunity to get some work done. There was an opportunity to do a work for the Lord and he called that door that was open to him an effectual door. Look there in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. God's working in, in Paul's life was not just any ordinary working. It was effectual. It was a, a work that got something done. It had an effect on his life. If you would, go over to James chapter 5. We're just looking at that word effectual this morning. It's a very important word. That was what Paul prayed for Philemon. He desired that he would have an effectual faith. You're there in James. Go over to James. I'll read to you again from Ephesians. It says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him into all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So often and we've looked at so many of these verses so far and we, we, off, we have seen that effectual and working, effectual and working, these are things that are going together. <clears throat> to be effective, to be effectual is to get something done. Look here in James chapter 5, verse 16. He said in verse 16, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, look, when something's effectual, it's effective, it gets something done. It avails much. And Paul's desire is that their faith, that Philemon's faith and the faith of all those that he preached to is that they would have an effective faith. He said in Philemon, if you would go back there in verse 4, I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers that the communication of thy faith may become effectual. You know, Paul is praying here that their faith would be as his faith was. If there was ever one that had an effectual faith, it was the Apostle Paul. And we don't need him to tell us that. We can just look at his life and see all the things that he did, all the work that he did, the sacrifices that he made, and we can say that man had an effectual faith. Some people have faith, but we have to ask ourselves, is it effectual? Is it getting something done for the Lord? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul said in verse 5, For the gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Paul saying there, look, we came to you in a certain manner. You know how we were. And the way that they were, 
when they preached the word is they came with power in the Holy Ghost. Paul is a man who had very effectual faith. <clears throat> now, what is the purpose of having an effectual faith? What is Paul's purpose here? Is it just to, you know, just to benefit himself? No, Paul's effective faith is something that benefited others. And that's the type of faith we should want to have this morning, a faith that's going to benefit other people. <clears throat> well, first of all, we could say it was effective because he says there in Philemon, chapter 1, he said in verse uh, 3, he said, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and thy faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus. Now, I would say that that faith that he had toward the Lord Jesus was not to benefit the Lord Jesus, but when you had that faith toward the Lord Jesus, it was an effective faith towards others. If you'll follow with me here, he says there that his faith was, uh, he has, his faith was, uh, his love and his faith was toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. What does it mean to have that faith toward the Lord Jesus? I believe that if we had the faith toward the Lord Jesus, not just believing in him, not just believing on him for salvation, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection, but if we had faith toward the Lord Jesus, an effective faith towards him, an effectual faith, then we would share in the work that Jesus did. And what was Jesus' work? What was it all wrapped up in? In one word, others. The Lord Jesus was all about everybody else. He came here to seek and to save the lost. And he was effectual at it. And that's exactly what he did. And Paul's saying here to Philemon, he's heard of thy faith, he's heard of his love that was toward the Lord Jesus. I believe if you were to look at Philemon's faith, you'd see a man who cared about other people, that sought the lost. He also had a faith uh, that was toward not only the Lord Jesus, but all saints. And this is really what I want to kind of focus in on this morning. <clears throat> because this is a very important thing for us to understand in the local church. Is that not only do we have to have, we're very good in our church, in churches like this, about having an effective faith towards others. We're very good about going out on a regular basis and knocking doors and with a tear in the eye and the Bible in the hand and trying to preach the gospel to those that will listen and bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. We're very good at that. <clears throat> but sometimes I wonder if we lack a little bit if we have a faith towards all saints. Not just the unsaved. That's a big part of it. That's what that, the Lord Jesus, then that was what he was all about. But we also have to have that faith toward all saints. We should have an effective faith for, towards the saints as well. If you would, go over to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. While you're going there, I just want to read you some verses, and I want you to listen to these verses. These are very important verses. It's all throughout the Bible, all throughout the New Testament, that we ought to have a faith towards all saints. That we should have faith and love, not just toward the Lord Jesus, but toward all saints. He says in Galatians 6, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You want to fulfill the law of Christ? You want to do God's will this morning? Then we need to learn to bear one another's burdens. Not just our own burdens, not just the things that we have to get done, not just the trials and temptations that we go through, but we as the saints, as the body of Christ, should also be there to see one another through life's trying times, which are sure to come to every one of us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, O no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Fulfill the law of Christ. Fulfill the law and love one another. Bear one another's burdens. Galatians chapter 5, Paul wrote, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Yes, we should have a love and a faith towards the others. We should go out there and reach them. But let's not forget to bring that same love and that same faith inside the church house and express that towards one another and bear one another's burdens and serve one another, it says right there. And that takes humility. And we have to be reminded of that. That church just isn't here for us. That it's here for all the saints. That it's here for us to know one another and to bear one another's burdens. He said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, the Lord make you in to increase and to abound in love toward one another. That was Paul's prayer. 
that they would increase and abound in love toward one another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says in verse 9, But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren that are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Paul's telling those Thessalonians there, he's saying, you don't need that, that, we, need to, you don't need that we should write unto you. You're taught of God to love one another. You know it in your spirit, in your heart. You know it's the right thing to do. And he says, and indeed you do do it toward all brethren. Paul's praising them here. But I love how he ends it. And he says, and we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. He's saying, look, I'm glad that you love one another. I'm glad that you have love toward all men, but increase more and more. We shouldn't have a cap on that. We shouldn't say, I'll love this person so much. I'll only put up with so much. That's not how Paul or the Lord would have us to live. He would have us to increase more and more in our love toward one another. You're there in 1 Peter chapter 3. What are we talking about this morning? We're talking about having an effective faith. A faith that's real. A faith that actually has an effect in the world. Has an effect in other people. We might not go out and, and turn this you know, world upside down and and, and have the world take note of us and praise us and, and lift us up and, and tell everyone to look to us as some great example. But boy, we can have a profound effect in our, in our church. Maybe on just a few, maybe if it's just one person. Maybe it's on just a few people. Maybe if it's just the people that gather within these walls. You don't know how great of an effect you can have on somebody by just showing a little compassion, by having a little love, by bearing a burden when it's needed. Unity in the local church is something that just has to be there. And it comes through love and bearing one another's burdens. Look there in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. It says, finally, be all of one mind. It's in agree, have one mind, have one mission, one, have one purpose. Having compassion one of, another, one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil, railing for la railing, but contrary-wise, blessing. <clears throat> He's saying there, this is how you're going to love as brethren. When you're offended, you still love. When you're railed on, you still love. When someone renders evil unto you, you love them in return. You don't render it back. Knowing that you are there unto called. Saying, look, this isn't optional. This isn't something that if you feel like doing, you should do. This is the law of Christ. To love thy neighbor as thyself. And not just when it's easy. And sometimes we have to be pitiful. Not in the sense that we're miserable creatures, but that we look at somebody else and have pity on them for their offense, for their bad attitude, whatever it might be. <clears throat> and we just bless instead rather than render evil for evil. The Bible says there in verse 10, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And that his lips and his lips that they speak no guile. So we see that if we're going to have an effectual faith this morning, we're going to have a faith that is based on loving others, not just the lost, but even those within the church. And I should have had you keep something there in Ephesians. If you go back to Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter two. You say, Why do I have to love? It's not easy. Some people are so unlovable. It's true. It's not easy to love everybody. It's not easy to go out there and knock on that door and people just blow you off, shake their head at you, especially when you've gone many, many miles. You've gone way out of your way. It's hot. And you could be doing a lot of other things. And someone gets nasty and mean and just looks like they sucked on a lemon. And they're just giving you a look and they're being rude. But we still have to love them. And not get discouraged, not get downhearted, but to be pitiful and to remain courteous and still understand that God loves even those people. No matter how mean and nasty they might treat us, God still loves them. And we have to remember the love that God had towards us. And maybe that's what's going to help us to love one another. 
is when we recall how much God loved me and you. Look there in verse 4. He said, But God who is rich in mercy. He didn't say God who is limited in mercy. God who's poor in mercy. God who's, who's got, you know, he's got some mercy. No, he says he's rich in it. He's rich in mercy. Mercy, forgiving. You know, not rendering unto somebody what they deserve. That's what mercy is. Not giving somebody what they deserve. That was God towards us. He was rich in mercy for His great love wherewith He loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together in Christ. By grace are you saved. <clears throat> so we see that an effectual faith is something that we have to actually express towards other people. It's something we actually have to put into action. It's going to take work. That's what effectual means. <clears throat> An effectual faith is based on loving other people, even when they don't love us back. What I really like about this, and really this is a passage I've been thinking about for a while now, and uh, I heard about some things down here that, positive things, good things, and I thought this is the time to preach it because uh, I got some news about some things that went on within our own church that just put a smile on my face. Because I didn't have to say anything or ask anybody to do anything. Somebody just, out of the love of their heart, did something for somebody. And I'll say this, that an effectual faith pleases the preacher. It pleases the pastor. When you can look out and see a congregation that has an effectual faith, that has a faith that loves one another. I mean, that's Paul's prayer here. That's Paul, what Paul wants for Philemon. He's beseeching him for Onesimus' sake. He's saying, look, show him some mercy, show him some grace for my sake and yours. He's asking him, he's imploring him, he's beseeching him to have an effectual faith towards Onesimus. And we had a lady in our church that went through some things recently and my wife had been texting with her. And You know, I'm not going to throw any names out there. You ladies that know, know, and so on and so forth. But she had, she'd gone through a procedure, an operation, and she had been dealing with some things, and, and my wife told me, hey, the ladies in the church got together and, and made her some meals and dropped them off. And I scratched my head and I said, well, I don't remember putting that in the bulletin. Well, I don't remember putting a sign-up sheet for that. I don't remember going on Facebook and telling people to do that. And it put a smile on my face because it, it, you know, it made me feel joy that there's people down here in this church that are having a faith, a faith like this. That it's an effectual faith that they're bearing one another's burdens. That's what they're doing. <clears throat> Look there in a, uh, you're, you're, if you're back there in Philemon. Look, in effectual faith, when, it, when, when, a, when the preacher, when the pastor looks out and he sees it happening, when he sees the Spirit of Christ in this congregation, it's a pleasing thing. It's something to rejoice over. It's something to, to praise. He said in verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee in my prayers. He's thanking God for Philemon. Hearing of thy love and thy faith. He said, I heard about it. Somebody told me about your love. Somebody told me about your faith, and I thank God for it. Having an effectual faith, you know, it's not just going to affect the people that we, we, we love and the people that we are compassionate toward and pitiful towards and courteous towards and the people that we put up with and everything else. It's going to be an example to other people around us. And it's going to be an encouragement to others as well. The Bible says in 3 John, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And that's the desire of every preacher, that's the desire of every pastor, is to see a congregation, you know, here he's alluding to them as children. Of course, we know we're, we're all, you know, there's adults and, and everybody else. But he's saying, look, the best thing, those that he's, when he's saying my children, he's saying those that I've invested in, those that I've spent time in, those that I've prepared for are walking in truth. They're not just hearing it, but they're doing it. They're not just hearers of the word, but they're actually doers of the word. He says that brings him great joy, no greater joy. <clears throat> you know, the best show of appreciation for, for what you have is to walk in truth. I mean, those that were going to, you know, wanted to thank John for 
his ministry and everything he did. They, you know, they could have sent him, you know, an edible arrangement. They could have gotten some chocolates. They could have sent him a gift card. They could have bought him a piece of furniture. Who knows? They could have done all these things that people do for their preachers and their pastors. But the greatest joy that he could have had was just to see them walk in truth. Just to see them do those things which he's taught. <clears throat> So how would we how could how does how is Paul seeing this here in Philemon's day? Where he's thanking God for him. He's saying, Look, I see Philemon, I know you, I hear about your love, I hear about your faith, and I thank God for it. How did he know that was the truth about Philemon? Because it was manifested in love. Because he, he knew the, the type of man that Philemon was, that when he besought him for Onesimus' sake, that he was going to be entreated for Onesimus' sake. The Bible says, if you would go over to James chapter 3, James chapter 3, and I won't keep us long this morning. James chapter 3, he said in Colossians chapter 3, you're going to James 3, he said, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. You know, these are the garments that we ought to wear as Christians. These are the things that we need to put on. These are the things, these are the attributes that we need to display towards other people. <clears throat> Bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. What is long-suffering? It's putting up with. It's having patience. It's what I do every drive down here. <laughs> when I got a little two-year-old pushing her feet right into my back as I'm trying to drive. It's been going on for weeks. And finally I said, can you move her over one seat? Can we just straighten that up and bring her over? But I didn't do it mean. But what was that? Long suffering. Right? And that's what we need to do with one another. That's what needs to be part of who we are. He goes on and says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Look, people are going to offend each other. It's just human nature. You stick around long enough, you put people in a room long enough, get people to know one another, people are going to offend each other. But we need to learn to forgive. If any man have a quarrel against any, and just in case you forgot why you should do that, even as Christ also forgave you, so also do ye. Look, there's nothing you, can, you can't forgive somebody for that can even compare what Christ has forgiven us for. It doesn't even come close. The Bible says in James 3 where you are, James 3, Look at verse 13. He said, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Well, a lot of people would say, Well, I am. <laughs> Let me answer that for you, James. You're looking at him. <laughs> Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among, among you? Right here. Right? Is the guy that's got that kind of wisdom really going to be that? That guy who's just going to stand up and volunteer to take, wear that name tag? No. The, man, the wise man, the one endued with knowledge, is the one that's going to, what does it say there? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Look, the wise man, the one who has the knowledge, is the one who's going to do the work. He's the one that's going to have an effectual faith. He's going to be the one that's going to have the works with meekness of wisdom. The truly wise person is a person who probably the last one to say it. Probably the last one to even thinking about himself. They just do what they need to do because they know it's the right thing to do. And if nobody notices, they don't care. Because they're doing it for the right reasons. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. He goes on and says, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. Just admit it. <clears throat> and forgive. So we see that this morning an, effect, an effective faith, an effectual faith, is one that is, exp is something, a faith uh, that is expressed towards other people. It's not something that we just keep to ourselves. Look, we can have faith to ourselves. We can have faith and go to heaven and, and get there and people go, I didn't even know you were a Christian. What are you doing here? Yep, I was. Oh, you never said anything about it. I couldn't tell. 
<clears throat> we can do that, but that's not an effective faith. That's not an effectual faith. And that's Paul's desire that Philemon would have an effectual faith. And that's my desire for the people in this church. That we all would have an effectual faith. One that is expressed towards others. One that is based on loving one another in this room. <clears throat> and I'll end by saying this, that an effectual faith is a refreshing faith. An effectual faith is a refreshing faith. That's what he said there in verse 7, Philemon. He said, For we have no greater joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. You know, if we, if we, we do this out of duty, we say, oh, we're going to bear some of his burdens. We're going to fulfill the law of Christ because it's our duty. Oh, we're going to love one another. We're going to serve one another as we have occasion. And I'll do that because I'm supposed to. And even if you had that kind of an attitude, even if you went into it just saying, well, it's the right thing to do. Even then, I'm going to minister to this person. I'm going to be pitiful or courteous or I'm going to bear their burden. I'm just going to have an effectual faith towards this person. And even if you just did that out of duty, I'm telling you, that person right there would be refreshed. There's people that are refreshed by us when we have an effectual faith. That's what he's saying. The bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. <clears throat> So if we're struggling to have an effectual faith, and I'll have you turn one to one more place, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. You say, well, I want that effectual faith this morning. I feel like that's missing. I feel like that's something I don't have. How am I going to get that? How can I have that spirit that Paul talks about here? How can I be like Paul? How can I fulfill the law, the law of Christ? How can I love one another? How can I do all these things? even as he did towards us. <clears throat> you need to acknowledge every good thing which is in you by Christ Jesus. That's what he said there. He said in verse 4, I'll read it to you, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy, faith, of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. He said that, his faith would become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in Christ Jesus. Everything which is in you in Christ Jesus. And that's, that's really the application this morning. That if you're struggling to have that effectual faith, maybe you just need to stop and think about the effectual love that God had towards you. He says there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Look, God wasn't just offended by our sin. God wasn't just put out. God didn't just get his feelings hurt. God said, you're dead. God said, you're going to die for what you've done. It goes on and says in verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith we loved, he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. It goes on, he says in verse 6, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you're struggling at that effect of faith, if you're having a hard time being all these things, loving, pitiful, courteous, forgiving, long-suffering, long forbearing, if that's something we're struggling with, you know, maybe we should just think about what lies ahead of us. It's a lot easier to take it on the chin when we know that Christ has made us to sit together in heavenly places with Him. I mean, I don't care what anybody, what they want to hurl, what insult, what accusation, what, e what evil they want to render unto me. When I just think about the fact that not only has God forgiven me of everything, of all my sins that, you know, that I was dead, all the trespasses that I was dead, and just think about the fact that one day I'm going to be sitting in heavenly places with Him. And all these stupid, trivial little things, all these little things that we get caught up in in this life are going to mean nothing. All the things that we just think, oh, this is the end of it all. This, it's over. No, it'll pass. And we, they, won't even be, they won't even be a memory in heaven. 
He said in verse 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> well, I'm struggling to have an effective faith this morning. Maybe that's us. I don't, I don't have an effective faith towards the lost. I just don't have a burden for it. It doesn't bother me that people are going to hell. I have no intention of changing anybody's eternal destiny. I, I'm really not interested in soul winning. We would love the lost if we'd acknowledge how much God loved us. If we'd just stop and think about it. That we're no different than anybody else out there. That we're just as dead in trespasses and sins as the vast majority of people are right now. <clears throat> that would change our spirit. You know, we'd be a lot more patient with one another. We'd be a lot more kind and forgiving and pitiful and courteous and long-suffering and forbearing if we would just acknowledge God's patience toward us and how much He puts up with us. That's really the message this morning, that if we're going to have an effectual faith, look, we're going we're to express that faith towards others. It's going to be a faith that people can say, this person has faith. I can see it. And not because they tell me about it, not because they are wearing a hat that says, I love Jesus or whatever. It's because they actually do things that show me that they have a faith that is effectual, that they have a faith that compels them to, to tell others about Jesus and make, gives them a, a patient spirit with, the, with, with their fellow Christians. Really, an effectual faith is just a faith that helps us to be kinder towards other people in whatever way that is. And you know what? We would be that. We would be that kinder person. We would be all these great attributes if we would acknowledge that God has expressed those same attributes towards us. All those things that we would love for people to be and all those things that we ought to be towards one another, we're more likely to do that. We're more likely to be all these things if we would just stop and recognize the fact that God has already done all of that towards us. We'd be kinder people if we would just acknowledge that how kind the Lord has been towards us. Let's go ahead and pray.